We now take you to the broadcast of It's Time with Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin. Here is Reverend Martin. Thank you, Reverend uh, Blackwell. Let me say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, never good night, and certainly never ever uh, goodbye. I hate goodbyes. And I'm uh, Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin, pastor of New Life Institutional Baptist Church here in Los Angeles. We were worshiping at 8916 South Main with the Shiloh Visionary Christian Church. We are having a Holy Ghost filled time over there every Sunday. We invite you to come and join in the great worship that is going on there. Thank God for Pastor Holliness opening her doors and inviting us in. We have a wonderful, wonderful uh, report right now. Uh, most of Mr. Robert K. Smith, I believe, who is a, uh, as I understand it, a private hedge fund uh, company. He's the owner of that company. And hats off to uh, Dr. Smith. He showed us what Black Power is all about. He paid off the student loans of those 400 graduates of Morehouse University this week. I'm telling you, there was a shouting in the camp. And if more of our brothers and sisters that are in that uh, rare air where you have billions of dollars uh, would uh, find a way or find a place and a space where you could be of a big help to our struggling brothers and sisters. It means a lot not to have to uh, be burdened with a heavy uh, college debt and you just got out of school and haven't got a good job. Uh, you don't have to go with your hat in your hand when you go to a prospective uh, employer or when you are contemplating starting your own uh, business uh, uh, activity or firm. I didn't want to get too far going on that before I reminded you that uh, this program basically supports and is about reparation. Reparation from what? Reparation from every ill that this country has cast upon uh, black people, from the disfranchisement we suffered in the voting early in this century uh, to the disfranchisement we suffered when we were not allowed and disallowed and denied the right uh to get loans, to buy homes when the suburbs were being opened up to all white Americans, but they were closed to all black Americans. Uh, we have a, a huge uh, history of undermining the efforts, the legal and the moral and the right uh, efforts of uh, black people to uh, progress or achieve uh, in spite of the change of slavery. You know, we didn't hold, we, 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 you owe us a debt from slavery. I was listening to Larry Elder, I believe this week, and he was pontificating uh, about give me a break that, uh, are we still talking about reparation? I said, yeah, we're talking about reparation. Why are we talking about it? Because reparation were never paid. They were never made. They were never mentioned. Uh, as I've said on many broadcasts, the uh, compensation window was open to the slave trader, the uh, slave owner, the uh, slave contractor, the, the slave master, but that compensation window was closed to the slave. And uh, I'll say again, as I've said many times, if hard work in America will give you success, then every slave coming out of slavery would at least be a millionaire. And that wasn't the case. Uh, it was poor as Joe's turkey. So just hard work is all it took? No, no, no. But some are going to argue with me about it. But again, the name of our podcast is It's Time. It's Time for Justice. It's Time for Pay Equity. It's Time for Equality. Uh, we got to have environmental 
uh, justice. We've been our people have been historically and and habitually put in the worst uh, living conditions, slum situation, toxic dump situation, uh, situation down at the bottom of a hill, like the people, poor people down in uh, New Orleans, that when the water come down from up top, from up the top of the hill where the white folk were living, it came down to the bottom where the black folk were living. Well, quite naturally, that's an environmental injustice. Uh, Cape Girardeau began to repair that damage many years uh, ago, and they paid uh, to relocate the uh, residents that were down in the bottom of uh, Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And uh, that should have been done in Louisiana. Let me get to my scripture before I fly out to Hannah. In the book called, <laughs> in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, it says, if thy brother, and by implication, if thy sister, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let them go free from thee. In other words, in God's economy, slavery was never to be perpetual. And I must stop and mention that the fact that this was not chattel slavery that was being practiced uh, among the Hebrews, as it, uh, which was the case here in America. America had the worst, cruelest, refinedest form of cruel slavery, where a person is reduced to being a mere package or a commodity. And that you could carry around, it was your property, you could carry your property around like you wanted. And uh, that's what uh, the, one of the major differences between the practice of uh, slavery in the Bible and the practice of slavery in the Bible belt. All right. And notice it was not to be perpetual, the slavery. So every six years, the seventh year, you had to let them go free. And when you let them go free, that's book number, verse number 13, when thou sendest them out free from thee, thou shalt not let them go away empty. Uh, the tragic scandal here in America is that America never wanted the black man to be free. They wanted the black woman with her children to be free. As a matter of fact, slave catches went out to uh, find, locate, and bring back uh, the hapless slaves who, es who had dared to escape from the plantation. Uh, as in the case of Miss Ona Judge, who was uh, one of the slaves of uh, George Washington, the founder of this country. Thank God she got away from it and stayed away from it, too. We couldn't catch it, couldn't find her. And, uh, but so many of our people were uh, caught and returned uh, to bondage. And even after bondage was over, so-called, uh, the, the, the Southern aristocracy found a, a way to re-enslave uh, the newly freed uh, freedmen, freedmen and women, uh, through vagrancy laws and uh, uh, convict leasing later on. Uh, all of this put our people right back in to a, 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 a slavery again. Uh, someone wrote a book called Slavery by Another Name because they were talking about uh, the fact that uh, the penal system, the uh, correctional system here in America is uh, putting more and more of our young uh, black men in the prime of their working years when they ought to be out uh, raising their families, working on a job, they're bound up in prison, in jail with long, lengthy sentences. And when they do, and while they're in there, another point, they're working. They're building for American Express. They're doing labor for HP. And a lot of the, the uh, uh, corporations are, are getting free or very, ex the cheapest of labor from the uh, prison right there, right here in America. Why, it's a travesty. It is a a scandal. It is a criminal shame before God. But by is legal, it's on the books. 
so they can't be hauled off in court uh, for their action. But our people are still uh, enslaved in, in these strange uh, and uh, pernicious and complicated uh, devices and stratagems and tactics that uh, the power structure uses to mask the uh, theory or the doctrine or the practice of white supremacy. But yet we are still caught up in the same racial uh, matrix, the same racial uh, racial web. And so these things uh, need to be redressed. And we need to go before the United Nations and make these cases. We need to go before the Congress of the United States and make these cases. We need to present bills, bills for payment, bills for equality. Bills to make us whole, uh, because uh, it was evident, it is evident, that the wealth gap between the top uh, one-tenth percent and the rest of us, the 98 percent, and uh, is, is not going to be uh, closed. We're not going to close that gap. What kind of work are you going to do to make you $97,000 uh, an hour? You can't work in no job paying that kind of money. Hmm? Talk to me. But let me get back to my text. I don't want to get away too far. Notice, he said, uh, Thou shalt not let them go out free from thee. You're going to let them go free. But you're not, when you let them go free, you're not going to send them away empty. <laughs> Thou shalt furnish him or her, him, her, slash, Liberally, that means give them a whole lot. Give them everything that they got to have to make it in that society. Now, wouldn't it be a great improvement if, when, if the prison system stopped kicking our brothers and sisters out of the prison with nothing? Coming out of that prison, you've been away God knows how long, and you're coming in, back into a, a changed world, a changed society. And uh, but they don't even give you what it takes to make it because they want you to do what? Go right back on out there, commit another crime, and come on back in because the system is getting rich off of the backs of our brothers and our sisters. And the system keeps rigging uh, the, the, uh, the wrongs of the ladder, keeps rigging the game so that... Uh, so many of our brothers and sisters, even though they are released, they can't go back home to their families because their families are living in public housing. And if you're a felon, you can't be in public housing. And so if you have a family that's in public housing, you can't go over there and visit. You can't go over there and stay. And so these uh, uh, obstacles are against the, the uh, newly, newly uh, released prisoner. Not saying that it... Some cannot make it in spite of, but saying that the opposition, the obstacles that are put in their way after they serve their time should be declared unconstitutional. Because once you have paid your debt to society and you come out of that prison, you should get all of your citizenship rights back. You should be able to vote, whereas in many states across uh, America, even though you're out of prison, you still don't get your right to vote back. And uh, especially in a state like Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and the like, those elk or those states, they don't want you to vote because uh, it's what it's a, a, another tactic for voter uh, suppression. Notice what God prescribes: that thou shalt furnish them liberally out of thy flock. That means you go all to your cattle, go to your sheep, go to your goats and all that other mess that you have, and you give those people liberally. So when you go out there, when they go out there, they got what it takes to get started, got what it takes to make it. All right, and uh, not just out of your flock, but then go out to go to the flow. All right, you got wheat, you got corn, you got barley, uh, you got rice, you got all those things that they were producing and growing in that part of the country in that era. I may be wrong by saying about rice, but the point is made that 
you were not to leave them going away hungry, empty, you know, and all that kind of stuff, and say, well, you free. All right. Root hog or die poor. No, that wasn't the way it was to be. Uh, and out of thy wine press. Oh, you got grapes? <laughs> you got wine? <laughs> God said what? Share with your brothers and your sisters. Don't send them away crippled and uh, handicapped because poverty within itself is violence. You do violence to people uh, in our country when we let them uh, live under the bridges and make them exist in these uh, motor homes and all of these type of uh, places because they can't afford to pay the high cost of rent and uh, the like. I think I got all that I wanted out of that for right now. Uh, notice that the Lord says, uh, out, of, out of that which the Lord thy God has blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him or to them. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Therefore I command thee this thing today. All right. And so down here just a little bit further. It shall not seem hard unto thee when thou sendest them away free from thee, for they have been worth a double hired servant to thee in serving thee six years. The Lord thy God shall bless thee in all that thou doest. Now this is God talking about how to treat slaves, how slavery was conducted in the Bible. Has no recognition uh, to any slavery that was uh, what that was uh, any any form of slavery uh, that was practiced here in the United States of America. As I said, we America practiced the worst, the most cruel, refined cruelty. Uh, you looked at Django. You saw how they were treating those slaves, those black people. Why it is a crime uh, human uh, against humanity? No, 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 no. Re, uh, the slavery uh, practice in the Bible bore no resemblance to the kind of slavery that it was practiced here in the Bible Belt. Now, slavery was not to be perpetual. You were not to, when you let the slave go free, you were not to let him go out empty. Uh, if he came to you poor, you weren't gonna let you won't let him go go away poor. You're gonna see that he had something. He he or she had something to get started with. All right, that was the Bible uh, view of how to deal with uh, slavery. All right, now look at. Uh, Further in the 24th chapter of Deuteronomy, it says, thou, thou shalt not oppress and hire a servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. That means uh, there is a great deal of oppression all over the world. Uh, those that have the power are, doing, are exercising that power to oppress and uh, distress and uh, repress. Uh, Every poor person, every weak person, because uh, it takes power to oppress. And uh, so we have a lot of people that are misusing uh, their power. Not all of them are black either. Uh, but they, we see power being misused. Because not all of them are white. A lot of them are, are, are our own color. And uh, these things, oppression... Uh, all of these things come before God. God says, thou shalt not oppress. And, but yet we do oppress. And uh, as the old folks say, if they catch you down, they can put their foot on you and keep you down. Uh, that's oppression. That's, but that's not the Bible way. That's not the scriptural way. Uh, that's not the law of love. The law of love says, do unto others you would have them do unto you. The law of love says that what we elevate mankind, actually that is the purpose of uh, organized government. It is to lift. It is to elevate. Uh, who was that? Abraham Lincoln said, give, each, give all an unfettered start uh, in the race of life. Uh, Linda Baines Johnson uh, taking a, picking up on that same uh, simile or metaphor 
uh, said that uh, you you come you bring a person up to the starting line of the race who has been shackled. You take the shackles off of him, and they tell him you're free now. You got to go. And uh, he said that's not the way to do it. No, because you you don't have no strength. You got no voting power. You got no buying power. You got no economic uh, power. And uh, notice I'm, my use of the word power. Economics is power. Money is power. The Supreme Court of these United States says money is what? Speech. Money talks. Everything else walks. And uh, uh, the people who have the money are, are hoarding that money. You have more and more money in the hands of fewer and fewer people. And uh, it gives the lie to the, uh, to the uh, defense and say, well, it's just a few people. Well, that's the point. A few people have got more money than the bulk of the people. And uh, that means that there should be more of an even evening of the playing field. There should be a radical wealth redistribution. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. himself said that there must be a radical revolution of values and that there must be an economic floor placed upon up under every citizen of these United States. Now, the uh, billionaires don't need no economic flow. They got it. But you and me, we need some economic flow, especially as you grow older and you suffer the vicissitudes of life and the setbacks of life, the divorces and the debts and all of those things that can possibly come against you. You need to know that there's an economic floor beneath which you will not be allowed uh, to fall, that your, your, your government is going to make sure that uh, you do not fall uh, and be destroyed. And uh, it's, not, it's not a tenable uh, concept to the rich, to the strong. Uh, no, because they have, uh, for the most part, the law on, on their side. They have power on their side. But on our side, we have godliness. All right. Uh, but notice, God said, Thou shalt not oppress and hired servant that is poor and needy. Uh, whether he, whether you know them or they be a stranger, if they're there and they're working for you, you treat them both the same. The person that you don't know, who's not familiar with you, and the person who may be of thy kindred, all right, or thy brethren. Uh, you have to tr practice, in other words, what the Bible would term equity or fairness. At that day, thou shalt give them their hire. Uh, that means pay them. Don't hold the money. Uh, don't tell them, well, I, 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 I just can't give you money today, Doc. You got to come back another day. No, give me my money now, Negro. I need to go down to the store. I got to go pay my car note. Wife got to get a half fixed. Got to pay the rent. Ain't no business what I do with my money, but you owe me, so pay me. And so these type of things, uh, we say to point out the fact that we ought to be fair and just with all our brothers and our sisters. Uh, how marvelous, again, it was that uh, this uh, Mr. Robert K. Smith, who has a hedge fund called Vista Equity Partners. It's a private equity firm. That means it's not publicly traded on the stock market, uh, but it's worth over $46 billion. And uh, he's to be commended for being the commencement day speaker at uh, Morehouse University uh, graduating class this year. And uh, being uh, altruistic enough, philanthropic enough, and uh, forward-reaching enough to release that energy in those young people uh, where they were burdened down with a serious uh, student loan repayment uh, problem. He had lifted that from off of their shoulders. It's just like somebody paying off your house and you don't have a house number and you got somewhere to stay. That's a whole big new world that uh, a lot of our people have never known what it feel like to be debt-free. And... Uh, that's beautiful. So that means they don't have to go hat in hand uh, to the employers just to get something to do. 
Uh, they don't have to take uh, some uh, dog job, all right? You know, they don't have to do something that they might be ashamed of down the road simply because they need to make a buck. Uh, they can start off fresh. They have opportunity to do it uh, the right way. They don't have to. They don't have to do. They don't have to slang drugs, and they don't have to steal. Uh, thank God for Jesus. Uh, I wanted to get back to Carol Anderson's book, uh, White Rage. She makes some very interesting and uh, very telling points about the tactics and the strategies that were used to uh, thwart the lawful aims of the black parents to see that their children received a good education in the public school. Uh, he says that the uh, politicians in uh, Prince Edward County closed the public school for five years. They siphoned off the tax dollars uh, into private academies and they and to pay the tuition uh, for white students. Yes, for white students, while ensuring that there was nothing in place for black students to contribute to their education. The lion's share of taxes were diverted to a private school system, private school system, while cutting public education. Does that sound like Los Angeles County? Does it sound like the state of California? Why, yes, they're engaged in that very same thing at this very moment. Uh, uh, Carol Anderson, I'm quoting, says, 20% of public schools were closed. In 1959, county supervisors immediately abolished the property tax that funded uh, public schools and diverted the money into a cash for tuition grants to support the all-white Prince Edward Academy. And those same tactics are being and have been uh, employed against the uh, black students here in uh, L.A. County, in L.A. USD, and all over the, the state of California. Closing, ending, we re encourage you, stay vigilant, stay motivated, stay prayerful, remain faithful, stay with the Lord, uh, keep pressing on, move toward righteousness, make the government uh, live up to its creed, make the government live up to its ideals. Uh, make of this nation a colony of heaven, as Dr. King said he was striving to do. And like Dr. King, we may not uh, get to the promised land in our generation, but as he said, we as a people, if we keep pressing, if we keep pushing, if we keep striving, if we keep marching, if we don't turn aside, if we stay the course, uh, we'll get to the promised land. And as I always say, uh, in this land of billionaires and trillionaires and millionaires, hey, if they don't want to pay you, don't work for them. Thank you, Doc. We're out. I've had some good days And I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days And some sleepless nights But when I look around And I think things over All of my good days All of my good days Outweigh my bad days, yes they do Outweigh my bad days I just say thank you Lord 